Hi and hello everyone. What we have seen so far is the base classical MG1 model where we assumed that the Python process arrivals and generally but IID distributed random uh, service times, single server, the capacity of the system is infinite and the service discipline or the queuing discipline that is being adopted was this FCFS which is basically the analysis was you know we are trying to make a analogous analysis corresponding to as opposed to the case of MM1 right and we want to look at the number in the system we want to look at the waiting time we want to look at the busy period now we have you know given certain uh, results whether it is pk mean value formulas or for uh, the waiting time distributions we have given in terms of transform for busy period also we are given in terms of transforms right so that's the core of the analysis that one does for any queuing system so the popularity or the relevance of that model is that like it is applicable in a much much wider class of situations as compared to a purely Markovian based models. But we see here that uh, you know the analysis can still be done using the Markov process analysis or the Markov chain analysis that we have acquainted with ourselves by considering only the Markovian process models, right. So, that is the advantage, right. Once you do the complete Markov process analysis based models, then you get uh, you know you increase your familiarity or comfortness with the Markov process based analysis. Now, when you come to MG1 also, especially I mean what you are trying to do basically whether it is supplementary variable technique or embedded Markov chain technique, you are somehow bringing back to the Markov and then apply the Markovian theory and then try to connect the dots. Say for example, in this case you consider the departure epochs and then you connected the dots means like you ensured that you know that is same as at arbitrary time point. So, that is all one would be interested to do this here. Okay. So, let us uh, in the MG1 framework itself of course, one can have variations like just like we had variations in MM1, but not all of them we are going to consider. Uh, we are going to highlight certain portions and certain portions we are leaving it open so that you know you can explore further when you actually want to look at how exactly that is being done. Okay. But one can do uh, and we will just highlight what are the things that is doable and at what level what would be which is easier which is a little more uh, messy or complex analysis one has to do uh, is what then we will try to highlight in the remaining portions of uh, this uh, you know MG type models. right? So, in that process the first one that we will take it up is that the capacity limitation right. Suppose, instead of an infinite capacity model and if you find that you know the capacity is limited to like in the our case ordinary case that we limit our capacity to capital K. So, basically then what we have? We have an MG1K model. Okay an MG1K model. This is the analysis of uh, such a model is very similar to that of an MG1, right. So, but we will just look at the what are the main ideas or main results or the, what the, we need to worry about it in that case, okay. Now, one thing is clear that PK mean value formulas that we be, or, uh, that we directly derived based upon this is no longer uh, applicable here since because of this reason that the expected number of basically joint arrivals during a service period now must be conditioned on the system size because any number of arrivals that comes during a service period of a particular customer may not be able to join. If there is a space in the system, then only they can, they'll be able to join. If not, they will not be able to join. So, it is in some way related to the system size, right? Just the current system size. Also, you need to worry if you have to capture that portion. Okay, but 
you know we will not worry about this mean formula obtaining it directly in this by looking at the system size and so on that is an idea, but you know we will not look at that aspect. Since in this particular case since there is only a finite number of states right because mg 1 k, so there is only finite number uh, of customers can be there in the system. So, it has only a finite number of states if you think number of customers as the states then one can find the steady state probabilities directly I mean at first basically in the sense and then obtain the mean value results ok. That will be you know both way you have obtained like you obtain the distribution as well as the, the mean value result. So, in this case now what happens that the single the basic step that is be different is that the we have the similar Marco chain, but now like uh, what will be left behind everything will come, but now the transition probability matrix of the embedded Marco chain. Now, this must be truncated at uh, k minus 1 ok. Remember here we are not truncating at k as what we are observing, we are observing the system just after a departure right. So, maximum just prior to departure right maximum number that could have been in the system was or uh, is capital K. And since one customer is leaving the number of customers who is left behind the departing customer is at most K minus 1 right. So, the that is what then you will have in this Marco chain. So, this is truncated K minus 1 if you if you truncate it then this is what and we will also assume k greater than 1 just to avoid the triviality because later on when we consider MGCC model it will become special case of that just to avoid that we will assume also that k greater than 1 k equal to 1 also will equally hold good. So, sometimes you know for simpler problems that when you want to do you can always assume k there is no harm, but for this analysis like we will assume that k greater than 1. it does not make uh, a difference. So, do not worry about that. So, basically these are war, this is was the uh, one step transition probability matrix everything is there right all the forms are there, but now the number of states is restricted to I mean you are truncating the state space at the level k minus 1. So, 0, 1, 2, 3 and up to k minus 1 is what you have it. So, here it will be cut from there and then this diagonal entry would then become 1 minus k naught and the last row here since the uh, row sum must be equal to 1 the last column right is automatically will be quantity which is written as given here. Say for example, in this particular case there will be only one term which is the lower diagonal term corresponding to that there will be k naught. So, the diagonal entry would become uh, 1 minus k naught which otherwise in the normal process you would have written as k 1, but now k 1 is only 1 minus k naught. So, that is what you get in the diagonal entry here. Now, up you go like here this is what you get here. So, this is k naught k 1 k 2 also this is actually k suffix k minus 1, but then k suffix k minus 1 is actually 1 minus of this quantity the remaining k. So, that is what we are writing it here. So, that you know just to make sure that this is what is your TPM. So, this is what will TPM would mean. Now, if I want to obtain the steady state solution or the equilibrium solution for this Marco chain, I will use the same stationary equations. So, the stationary equation now then will become the first part right. So, if I look at here this is all 0 whatever we have cut this portion in this column these are all 0. So, pi p equal to pi when you write it. So, the first this and then this multiplied by this this multiplied by this column like those set of equations that is what you know we write it here up to this particular set they remain same as the earlier ones they remain same as the earlier ones there is no change in that ok. Only the change will be in the last column which we ignore and we substitute that with the total probability of this pi should be 1. So, this pi at k minus 1 is basically 1 minus of this is what. So, you are, you are putting it here 
instead of the last equation that you know you would get in pi p equal to pi and pi e equal to 1. So, that is what this equation is. So, then this set of k equations then become a consistent set of equation and which can be solved for the probabilities right because we have removed from pi p equal to pi 1 equation and we have added this. So, then this is a linearly independent system of equations which you can solve for these uh, quantities right. So, once you solve for these quantities then you obtained this distributions pi i's which is basically now the departure point uh, probabilities and then the average system size at the points of departure then you can obtain it as this right. So, once you have the distribution you can obtain the means corresponding to that ok. Now, that is what you are seeing it here. Now, if you look at in this set of stationary equation the first portion this equation is exactly I same as the other uh, the unlimited m g 1 type expressions right. So, so the respective stationary probabilities if I call pi i for this finite uh, capacity m g 1 system and if I call some pi i star as the original one which is without any capacity limitation if it is m g 1 models quantity is pi i star then these two must be proportional right. So, pi i equal to some constant times pi i star. Now, the usual condition of probabilities that the probabilities must sum to 1 implies that c is equal to this quantity right. So, that is the way you know you can uh, obtain easily the between connecting between or establish the relationship between the uh, stationary distribution or the steady state distribution between m g 1 k and m g 1 because you see this equation is the same. So, that means that uh, you know it must be that this must be the case where pi i star is the corresponding quantity in the m g 1 model and this constancy then I can obtain it as the one which is normalizing this quantities to 1 right. So, that is that is the way uh, we can do this. Now, also here the probability distribution for the system size encountered or seen by an arrival will be different from pi i right because now the state space must be enlarged to include k because an arriving customer can also see k right. And this one now this is another thing that we are introducing here is this a n dash what is this is the probability that an arriving customer finds a system with n customers. Here we are talking about the distribution of arriving customers whether or not they join the queue ok. But in so far the whole course whatever we have considered when we talked about the arrival point distributions we always looked at the arrivals that join the system ok. What do they see is what we have seen. But here this dash one is excluding that right. This is you know as if you are from outside you are looking at it, but at the arrival instance right. So, whether or not they joined the queue is not the question. So, what they are seeing at those instances? If you consider only those arrival instances at which the arrivals join the queue, then that is what our usual notation a n. And many a time or at least in some cases that you know this also has its own significance right because uh, you just want to look at the system at those time points ok. Now, to do this to we want to obtain this a and s in this particular case. Now, to do that recall that while proving this pi n equal to p n in the m g 1 model uh, we it is noted uh, we can we note that ok this pi n equal to p n or the equality holds as long as the arrivals occur singly and service is not in a bulk then the limiting proportions are all equal is what then we have seen right. Now, similar is the case with this except that now the state spaces are different. So, the difference is taken care of first by noting that noting the following fact that pi n 
is basically the arrival finds n and the customer does in fact join that is what is this pi n which is equal to a n and this is then a n in terms of a n dash if you think. So, a n because this is the probability of finding the system in n provided that you join right. So, that can happen only if it is up to k minus 1 if it is in k of course, in arriving this a n dash will have the state uh, n can be equal to k, but for a n this n equal to k that is 0 right. So, a n for all n up to 0 to n minus 1 would be same as a n dash, but now this distribution needs to be normalized uh, with these values. So, it is a sum of those values. So, that is effectively equal to 1 minus of the left out one which is a k dash right or a n dash is equal to this quantity right that is what we are seeing it here. Now, to get this uh, a k dash we use an approach that we are used uh, similar approach which we are used in Markovian models where we equate the effective arrival rate to the effective departure rate. So, here this is the effective arrival rate to the system. Uh, because this is the proportion or the probability that you know the system is full in that sense and arrival find the system full. So, in that case you will not be able to enter arrival find means this is an arrival who may or who may not join. So, that is that is the case. So, this is that probability. So, that is equal to this now that means that so if you substitute this here right if you substitute a n dash would be equal to this or first you can get from here a k dash as you know you just you know use this to get this expression and substitute that here you will get this a n dash to be equal to this expression that we have. But since the original arrival, arrival process is Poisson, so this must be equal to for all n and hence uh, my a naught dash which is equal to p naught is basically equal to this quantity and from which we can obtain p naught to be this in terms of pi naught and rho. So, finally, then a n dash would be equal to this quantity here pi n by pi naught plus rho is what then you would obtain it in this particular case right. Now, you can think about like what would happen if there is no uh, limit or anything what would have been these expressions you can think about it a bit ok. So, this is what uh, you know you could consider. So, m g 1 k model. So, what one can do that you know the analysis is almost similar to the m g 1 model there is not much difference. Uh, only thing is now you, you have a finite state space which gives rise to some complexities and that you need to take care when you are working out. Now, in this case in directly p k mean value formulas do not hold. So, you try to obtain the system say distribution first and from there uh, you obtain the mean value results right. So, and that is what you know one, one can of course, other aspects one can look at it, but anyway it is almost similar what one would do for an MM 1 k model in, in, in the particular scenarios ok. So, this is on the finite uh, queuing systems ok. Now, this there are some more additional things that we will s highlight or say where we will not even go uh, to even this much details in, in, in that situations ok. Uh, the, we will study some additional results connecting with impatience, output, transients, finite source, matching and so on. We will just highlight you know we are not going to go any detail in any of those. Okay. Now, let us take the case of impatience, we said that impatience could be different forms, but one can easily introduce bulking into the m g 1 q by prescribing a probability p that an arrival decides to actually join the system. And this is not just in this particular case, any model that you have considered so far, you can always introduce this kind of bulking very easily. So, here it is also very easy. So, then the true input process would be then the filtered uh, process with rate now then it will be lambda b right. If b is the probability of joining each each arrival with probability b only it joins otherwise it will you know bulk right. Then b lambda would be that uh, rate of arrival for such 
arrivals who actually come into the system, then this is the arrival process is a Poisson process with this mean or with the rate B lambda and hence this k n s which is basically when you want to consider the number of arrivals during a service time. Now, we will have this form where with the original there was a lambda now that is replaced by k n. So, that is what uh, you know you would see here like here it is b lambda here that, that is what you know you would that is the change that you would. Now, once you make this change the rest of the analysis goes through parallel to that of an m g 1 q uh, where the probability of idleness now it will be 1 minus rho earlier it was lambda by mu but you know, wherever lambda is there now b lambda would take over you can call that as some say lambda dash or anything of that sort. So, that is what you know you would get as the probability of idleness. So, this form of this not just in m g 1 this can be in fact uh, affected uh, this, this kind of changes can be affected in any model that you can think because you are filtering away a, a, a portion in the beginning itself without coming into the system and because this is randomly you are picking the customer every customer has a probability of b of joining the queue or leaving or bulking one with probability 1 minus b. So, this is uh, you know the random split of the Poisson process which is again a Poisson process so which is what so only not consider that but if it is then one can think there are situations where you know this kind of models are also required to be handled. But the other kind of thing which is basically the reneging kind of impatience if you want to then it requires some amount of work ok. Now, that distribution also matters there actually right what is the distribution of that whether that is general or that is still you are keeping it as exponential say in m g 1 you are still retaining one uh, exponential and one thing you are generalizing. Now, when you bring in the reneging now after how long after joining the queue the uh, customer is thinking about reneging. Now, if you think so then uh, you need to bring in that distribution of that whether if that is also g or that is an m which is exponential. Uh, if it is exponential then you know that things will be slightly easier, but because then you do then you do not have only one uh, sort of non exponential distribution to handle we can handle it. But so, the complexity level varies depending upon what you are assuming as you say, but here in the in the bulking case you do not bring in any other distribution, but in the reneging case you will bring in another kind of distribution. Now, what kind of distribution is it would also gives rise to the complexity right. So, that is about the uh, impatience. Now, as far as the output process is concerned we have already seen in the case of MM1 that particular system and in fact, MMC itself also has Poisson output, but if you ask the question is there any other type of queues, uh, queues that has this same property the answer is no. So, and in, the MG, in particular uh, of course, uh, MG1 queues do not possess this output process because in the Bugs theorem when we proved also we said that this is the only system that that has this property right. So, because you know the such processes are not reversible processes ok the, the, for the output to, to be same as input what should be intuitively it is clear that whether I am looking the process starting from this side if I look at this you, and starting and pick a time point at the end and then starting from this if I look at the process. So, this is a probabilistic replica of the forward process the forward movement ok. It is not that it has to exactly match right. So, it is a pro, what we say is a probabilistic replica meaning that there is a path from this side to this and this path when you look back it is also one of the path which you would have otherwise obtained in as one of the paths in the forward process ok. So, that is what you know you can. So, if that is the case then only like you know you will get this property to hold, but that is what is make made at this MM1 process or MMCQ process as having that kind of reversibility property leading to the output process being Poisson, but MM MG1 does not have that. Then what can we say about the 
distribution of the inter departure time in an mg1 q in steady state right you might like to still look at that because this is one of the important models so one wants to look at what is that okay because the reason also will be clear known to you right because why you know in the queuing network context like we assumed the Poisson arrivals, Poisson service, Poisson service really we need to keep in because the output we want to make it Poisson so that you know you get the network which gives rise to your product form network for which analysis can be done easily. If you bring in G, now you just set we just said that okay this is uh, does not have the Poisson output then what kind of output is it whether we can characterize if we can characterize to some extent then at least that one can use as an input to the next one, but the next one will become then really GG model kind of thing. Okay. So, that is what then one has to handle, but even in any case sometimes it is necessary because when the network is small like 2 nodes, 3 nodes then one can easily characterize the distribution and one can still analyze to some extent. Okay. So, if that is the case if you are interested in the CDF of the inter departure term let us call this as C of t with B of t as usual the service time CDF. Now, this C of t is basically probability of the inter departure time is less than or equal to t. Okay. This can be written as in as a sum of two things one is probability of inter departure time less than or equal to t condition on whether the service the inter departure time had an ideal period inside it or not. Okay. So, probability that the system experienced no idleness during the inter departure period multi or it experienced some idleness during the inter departure period. So, based upon this you are basically applying the your total probability law or you are conditioning on this fact and you are trying to compute these quantities separately. Now, we know no idleness is rho and then the system experience no idleness and the inter departure time is less than or equal to t is this quantity. Okay. And if there is some idleness right, then the inter departure period with the idleness is a sum of idle time and service time right, sum of idle time and idle time is distributed as exponential with parameter lambda, service time is this. So, it is a sum so, this is the convolution that you will get and with idleness is basically uh, 1 minus rho is the probability of uh, the system being idle right. So, this is what is the expression. So, C of t now you can obtain it in terms of B which is the service time distribution in this relationship. So, this is the relationship this is the you know relationship that you can establish between the service time distribution and the inter departure time distribution. Okay. Now, you can as an exercise you can think uh, you can show that uh, you know if the exponentiality of C of t would imply the exponentiality of this B of t. If this is exponential C t is exponential that means B must be exponential. Right. If B is exponential of course, you can simply substitute and you can arrive at C also to be the case that you that is what you can see. So, in our context this is an important result in the sense that the it characterizes that gives us the inter departure time distribution in terms of the service time distribution when arrivals are Poisson that is what you know you have it here. So, this is a quite a important result in that context. Okay. But then this fact that M M 1 is the only M G 1 with the exponential output has serious repercussion uh, for the solution of say for example, series or tandem network models because the output of the first stage will be exponential which would we would like to be only if it is MM1 otherwise you know it is not going to be exponential. But still some small MG1 tandem network kind of problems can be handled numerically with the help of C of t where C of t that is where you know this is being used when I said that you know for small network 2, 3 networks which is basically say for example, in many of the applications related to supply chain management or anything of uh, inventory management and so on uh, 
uh, you would always in production systems or manufacturing systems you will have two three systems or two three stages only like you will have in, in such situations which can still be handled uh, within this framework using this particular results one can at least handle numerically right so that is what is the advantage that one can where this will be of very uh, high utility in that scenario ok. Now, by putting a capacity restriction on m g 1 at k is equal to 1 with m g 1 1 it can be seen that such queues also have an IID under departure times, but because now this is because the successive departure epochs are identical to B C cycle which is found as the sum of idle time paired with an adjacent service time is what then the B C cycle. So, that is what you know it will come out to be in the case of M G 1 1 system ok. So, this is about the output process. Now, with respect to the transient uh, results though we said that we are not going to talk about. So, we will just highlight a point that is all. Uh, in this transient results of M G 1 Q we will again take the embedded Marco chain and appeal to Marco chain theory and chapman kolmogorov equations uh, to obtain the transient state distributions. But then here this k is basically the state space is infinite, but computation wise you know you need to get uh, you know you cannot handle it in that sense, but then you have to truncate at some level. So, a careful and there have been studies about in you know, how one can truncate and so on not just now even 30 40 years before itself think that those things have started because an infinite dimensional matrix you cannot really code it right. So, it needs to have some finite dimension. So, then what would be that how will you determine what would be the impact of that in the further analysis all those things have to be kept in mind. So, what are the points to note and how one can truncate carefully so that you know you are not losing anything in your analysis or you are, you are not leading to wrong results in that. So, there are papers which are written on that. So, a careful truncation is what is needed in such situations when actually not just in this case any numerical procedure that you want to apply when you have an infinite uh, state space system you will have to truncate at some point then then where you will truncate is the question always that you would ok. So, that is using that idea then trans analysis can also be done. Now, the finite source m g 1 is essentially the machine repairment problem with arbitrary distributed repair time. So, repair time is g and has been solved in the literature again using an embedded Marco chain approach. So, it is not very difficult to do that. Now, with about with respect to bulk queues the bulk input and which is denoted by m x g 1 and the bulk service which is uh, m g y of 1 can also be solved with the use of Marco chains right. While the bulk input model is relatively easy input bulk input because one can do a similar analysis, but with certain differences are there and it is available in the text itself the, which is easier to handle, but the bulk service problem is a bit more complex, but it is still doable no problem. Okay. Now, with respect to priorities again the mean value measures or expected value measures is uh, can be obtained in an easier manner in certain models. Okay. But uh, you know other than that you know even you have seen even with Markovian the structure itself how complex that has become. So, here also there are there is not done, but it is also there, but so anything you anyone interested like you know you can always look at that further into this case ok. So, these are certain points that we wanted to see with different uh, features how one gets added to this and whether you know whether those kind of models are still doable or it has been done and in what kind of complexity levels that you want to you just want to have a certain idea that is what you know we have given here ok. Fine, so we will stop here and we will continue in the uh, next lecture. Thank you, bye.